Today is the Feast of St. Andrew, the Apostle that we heard about in the Holy Scripture. And the interesting thing about St. Andrew is he's identified with an X-shaped cross. He was martyred in, in Petras, which is a section of Greece, and he became patron of of the Black Sea area in, in Russia and in other areas in that area of the Black Sea. And that's where he went to preach. But the reason he was crucified on an X-shaped cross is a legend that he was not worthy to die like Jesus died. So he died on the X-shaped cross, not nailed to it, but tied to it. And that was his martyrdom. Hence, we wear the red vestments in honor of any of the apostles who were martyred. But what's Andrew doing? We read about Andrew before he met Jesus, and he was an apostle of St. John the Baptist. And as an apostle of St. John the Baptist, he was seeking the Messiah. John was not the Messiah. He pointed to the Messiah. And he was seeking the Messiah. And I think... For us, that's a great way to understand our mission, our uh, following of Jesus as apostles. Seek the Messiah. We're on the brink of Advent, and in many countries, this day is the unofficial beginning of Advent, the 30th of November. In a few days, the Advent week will be put together, and we'll be commemorating four weeks of Advent. But through the season of Advent, we're seeking the Messiah. Now, we already have the Messiah in Jesus, but the whole thrust of Advent is going, traveling, looking forward to the second coming of the Messiah. So while we're doing that here now, we can make our personal journey seeking the Messiah, bringing him into our world, bringing him into our lives. And Jesus is not a magic potion. Jesus is not a genie. Jesus is not anything out of extraordinary fascination. Jesus is born a man, although he's son of God. And seeking the Messiah that he eventually reveals himself as is part of our journey. Toward Advent, yes. Toward the Second Coming, yes. So it's finding Jesus every day in our lives. Where do we find him? We find him in prayer. Yes, we find him in action. And, and, and the first reading from Romans makes that very clear, that we need to preach Jesus. We need to, to share Jesus. How will other people know about him unless we, like the apostles, share Jesus? How can we make him known? And it's funny, in uh, scriptures, People who make Jesus known have been called beautiful. From Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. So as you and I bring the good news to one another in prayer and in action and feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and in praying for one another, we're part of that whole tradition of beautiful feet. Now, it doesn't matter what your feet look like or even if you have feet. It's the message. It's the, it's the journey. It's the proclamation. Now, we present all of our prayers today, the, the prayers of, the, of the, this particular Mass of the parishioners of our parish, St. John and, and Mother Cabrini. But also on, on a special level, on our own personal level, we, we can seek the Messiah asking him to intervene with our own intentions. In a very special way today, I pray for my niece, Kim, as she goes to her doctor for a second opinion, for faith that God, Jesus Christ, will be with her throughout her journey of healing. And that's our prayer all the time, that what the intention we pray for is a journey. And the intention we pray for, as repeated in the Lord's Prayer, is your will be done. And that's a risk. Because Jesus is not a genie, 
Jesus is not a magician. Jesus is the Messiah who fulfills our dreams, fulfills our prayers, fulfills our longings in a connection with him. Our feet, quote, are beautiful if we walk and talk Jesus. Our feet are beautiful, and again, not physically our feet, but the message that we carry with us is powerful. And the message is that Jesus is with us. And that's tough. When things are not easy, it's hard to believe Jesus is actually with us and hearing our prayers. Imagine what it was like for Andrew as the twelve separated and brought the gospel to different parts of the world. Andrew goes to the area around the Black Sea where he is now a patron of that area. He's patron of Scotland, he's patron of Russia, and so many other areas that his influence spread to. And it wasn't easy. The fact that his reward was crucifixion shows us the direction of his, his ministry. So he was carrying God's word, so therefore his feet were beautiful, his, his message was beautiful, and yet he suffered for God's word. And that's part of the mystery of our faith. Because how did he suffer? He suffered on a cross. Okay, it was X-shaped for us, but in imitation of Jesus Christ. He suffered. He suffered with faith. So he didn't get what he wanted necessarily in his lifetime, the proclamation of the gospel. But because of his style of life and his martyrdom, his word has spread out like all of the apostles. His word has spread throughout the world. So today certain countries honor him. Very popular in Scotland, St. Andrews. Very, very popular there. St. Andrew is very popular in England and, of course, other places that have adopted him. He's an apostle. Beautiful feet. That's our ministry. The search for the Messiah in everything we do. In our prayer, in our sharing, and in our love. Enjoy your beautiful feet as you proclaim Jesus, your Messiah.